What's going on everyone? It's Tokyo. back with another episode of VGC Climb the Ladders. I know we missed like four days in a row and I really do apologize for that, but it was largely due to the fact that I was uh, dealing with some face cam issues. Unfortunately, my face cam was uh, not really working for me. I didn't know what the, the reason for that was. If you watched my last video um, for uh, the MPL Division 2, I explained it a little bit then, but in case you didn't, you're only here for the VGC content or you just uh, are a new viewer and you didn't see that, um, I did explain a little bit um, in that video. But yeah, pretty much my uh, face cam was not working at all. I didn't know the reason why. Turns out it was my USB extender. I only have four USB ports, but I have five things that I need plugged in kind of at all times. And uh, unfortunately, though, uh, my USB extender wasn't working, so it kept dropping my face cam. For some reason, it wasn't dropping my mic as much, uh, which is why I was unaware of that the USB extender was the issue because of the fact that um, I have my mic and my face cam unplugged into that extender. But uh, turns out just my face cam was having issues dealing with it, so um, I had to find different solutions to make this work. I haven't went and got a new USB extender. I'm kind of on the fence about doing that, concerned that it might just not work again, and it might be something with my computer computer and reading USB extenders. I really don't know. I'll probably end up just purchasing another. Another just sucks. Um, I really hate wasting money though. So that's just, that was the reasoning right there. I do apologize for that. But uh, as you can see, if we use our face cam every time we bring you one of these episodes. So I definitely wanted to make sure we had our face cam uh, while we climbed the ladder and uh, we just, uh, we didn't have that luxury, unfortunately. So I decided I would just uh, try to figure out uh, what exact technical issues I was dealing with and then bring you guys an episode when I could. Due to that, though, we didn't get to feature this Dallas Regionals winning team that we built with Nowak and um, EMBC at Dew and Drew. We didn't get to feature this team as much as I would have liked, so we are back for this week, and I am going to feature this team for this entire week, so we can definitely get this team the limelight or the showcase that it deserves. Um, I definitely want to use this team more so that uh, we can definitely uh, see exactly uh, what's so good about this team, what exactly works and everything. We've had some really nice battles. Um, I unfortunately have won like game ones, and then I lost game twos by literally a sliver of health. We had a Snorlax that lived on what looked like 1 HP, and then we had a Quirkazel that lived, what looked like it lived on 5 or less HP. So just uh, some unfortunate things that happened there. I did reset my rating. It's a new week. I just wanted to start over. So, um, yeah, I reset my rating. We do get a 1541 opponent, I think. And uh, their name is uh, Adria, Adria S. And they are using one of those, uh, that little... That little uh, sign you see in the corner means that it is a QR team. The QR teams are now usable, so you can use other people's QR teams, which is pretty cool. Um, I recently heard, I think it was Chupa said he was going to, um, it might have not been Chupa, but I, I overheard someone that's uh, pretty well known in the VGC circuit, said they, they've been using a Vanillix team and that they would make it into a QR team for those to use. So maybe it's that team. Overall, though, uh, they do have a team of Vanillix, Tapu Fini, Tapu Coco, Arcanine, Kartana, and Garchomp. So going into this matchup, um, I'm thinking of how I can deal with Kartana and Vanillix as I see both of them being brought. So... Um... My opponent lead Coco. Yeah, they might just go Coco. I want to lead uh, Araquanid, but my opponent might actually just lead Coco and Vanillix, which would be really bad for us. So I'll bring Araquanid in the back. And then, yeah, I'll just bring our own Kartana. So we'll see how that works out for us. But I, I keep thinking there was something that else I wanted to go over with you guys that I didn't quite touch. Oh, and just the fact that the, the way I have the face cam and everything now, I just unplugged my keyboard uh, while I'll do this. Obviously, I don't really need my keyboard for anything right now while I record these episodes. So uh, I will just keep my keyboard unplugged when I'm uh, doing series that do have the face cam. And when I, I'm doing series that don't require the face cam, then I just uh, will obviously um, not be worried about that. But... um. Yeah, so my, uh, we lead Coco, uh, Porygon, a very staple lead that I've been going with a lot, as our opponent leads have Vanillix and Garchomp. So I'm thinking right off the bat that uh, just uh, protecting our protecting our Coco and uh, attacking with Porygon seems like a solid move, but at the same time, though, my opponent can just protect their Garchomp, so I may want to just uh, set up Trick Room, but they may have a Taunt, Taunt Vanillix. Is this Taunt Vanillix? They may have a taunt Vanillix. I'm still going to go for it. I'm actually just going to go for it. Yeah. Because I do think Garchomp either protects. I do think Garchomp just likely protects. And uh, due to that, due to that, I don't think just protecting and trying to Ice Beam the Garchomp sounds like a plan. 
Oh, Garchomp just goes for an EQ though. That's also fine. Um, EQing into their own Vanillix is perfectly fine by me. We'll see if this Vanillix is carrying Taunt. It looks like it's not a Scarf Vanillix. Yes, it is carrying Taunt because it is not a Scarf Vanillix. So that is fine. It looks like the Garchomp's actually Scarf though. So, um, we can deal with that. Yeah, I'm, I am going to play under the assumption that this is a Scarf Garchomp. I've been seeing so many more Scarf Garchomps, and uh, I am definitely going to play under the assumption that that is a Scarf Gar Garchomp. Considering that Vanillix is uh, definitely best ran with a Scarf, so they maybe uh, wanted to definitely uh, wanted to prioritize putting that Scarf on their Garchomp, so they uh, allowed their Vanillix to be ran without it and make it more of a uh, kind of a, a taunt, more of a taunt Pokemon. So that's fine. We'll switch into a Raquanid to take the EQ, and we will just go for an Ice Beam into the Garchomp slot. Hopefully this works out. Pona does switch into their Tapu Fini to switch up the terrain. We did switch out, so that's perfectly fine by me. And yes, I am pretty sure this is a Scarf Garchomp. We'll take a decent amount more damage on our P2, which is a little unfortunate, but unless they have Kartana, I shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be too bad with the Porygon being knocked out. We should be able to recover eventually. Um, this Garchomp has a lot of special bulk, also. Uh, I would love to go for a Thunderbolt on Finny, but I think it's definitely in my best interest. Um, un unfortunately, we might get double targeted on, on Porygon there. That is an issue. Um, actually, this is what we can do. Even if, uh... Oh, yeah, we're taunted. Okay. Then yeah, I'm just going to Wide Guard and Ice Beam the Garchomp. I just don't want to take more uh, damage on P2 from that Garchomp. I know we shouldn't be taken out in that regard then. And uh, yeah, my opponent will just pretty much be EQing into their own uh, Finny slot. So just a, friendly, a little bit of friendly fire here. And then we should be able to knock out the Garchomp with an Ice Beam. Not sure Finny can knock us out with anything unless it is Choice Specs. It does just go for a Calm Mind, which I am, I'm fine with at this point. We do have Carton in the back. So you have ways of getting around it, going for Calm Mind, and it's really not at the highest amount of health at this point. So we will take out Garchomp, so that's that's looking nice. Hopefully we can get a recovery here pretty soon, though. We definitely uh, kind of need it. So that's not bad, though. Health damage starting to rack up a little bit, though. Um, we may have to dodge a Muddy Water if we want to keep our Porygon. All right, taunt does wear off though, so we will finally be able to recover. I completely uh, forgot about, forgot that recover. Um, I usually I'm just so focused on taunt, this allowing us to. Uh... Okay, that's actually a good switch in for my opponent. It's actually good. Um, what can we do here? All right, yeah, I am going to switch in Coke. Mm, maybe this isn't the best choice. It probably isn't, but I really want to save Porygon 2. I think we can uh, win the game if we uh, are able to recover with Porygon 2. So I'm going to switch in Coco, hoping that my opponent goes for a Sacred Sword on that slot. They do just go for a Leaf Blade on a Raquinid, so good, really good play by my opponent. Uh, we do have our Citrus, though, so unless a Moonblast was targeted at a Raquinid, we should be able to uh, stay around. And a Moonblast was, it looks like, was targeted on... No, okay, perfect. Ooh, oh, that Oko's, okay. I didn't see that coming. All right, we will get this lunge off at least, though. Katana will be buffeted by the hell. So maybe that wasn't the best switching on my part, but I was feeling pretty confident that a Sacred Sword would come off onto Coco, so I would be able to resist that, and then uh, then I could just get that lunge off on Kartana, and then we'd be in on a Pokemon that was faster than both of these two and threatened both of these two pretty heavily. But um, I feel like we can still play around this one. Uh, what we can do now is we'll go into our own Kartana, hope to win the speed tie. Uh, Yeah, we're going to hope to win the speed tie. 
And, uh... I guess it's not the end of the world if we don't win it, considering that uh, Car the other Cartana is at a uh, minus one right now, but it would be nice to uh, win that speed tie. Hopefully Finny doesn't protect. I am going for a Leap Blade on that slot because I need to make sure it doesn't damage a Raquinid because if Cartana targets my Cartana and we're able to knock out Finny like we are able to, then I can get another lunge off on uh, my opponent's Cartana and make it much more able to be dealt with, or a little uh, much easier to be dealt with. Considering that my opponent's uh, uh, Vanillix isn't Scarf, we should outspeed it, and we do just get another Leaf Blade onto our Raquinid, which is a crit, unfortunately. I'm not sure that would have took us out. Definitely not sure, but uh, um, there is a good chance that it would have taken us out. All right, so now we're we're in a tight spot because it's really gonna come down to do we uh do we outspeed this Vanillix? There's a play now for my opponents to Sacred Sword Porygon two and to just go for a hell, uh, just go for um, just go for a Blizzard with their uh, Vanillix. Our Sash hasn't been broken though, but uh, after that hell damage, that's actually going to be an issue. Do I just take out Vanillix though? I'll still take the hell damage, yeah. Mm. Yeah, this is interesting. Um, I'm going to target Kartana. If it does protect, um, that might be just uh, BGG. So that switch in with Coco actually was really bad on my part. It definitely wasn't the smartest play, as uh, now we're in a tight spot. We do outspeed, it looks like, and we get a Sacred Sword off on my opponent's Kartana, which should take it out. It does take it out. So um, I think we're in a good spot now. Even if the Blizzard does come off, um, we should be able to recover with P2 and outstall this vanilla chest. The blizzard does come off as long as they're not frozen. It looks like we didn't get frozen and we are able to recover. So Cartana's buffeted by the hell. Alright, so that actually did a good amount of damage, but I'm not sure how bulky Vanillix is. I'm hoping that this Thunderbolt takes it out. This uh, um, this may not, though. It may just taunt us. I didn't want to go for another recover and just get taunted. Uh, that'd feel like a very wasted turn, and I would just take hell damage. So um, I am just going to go for the attack. They do just go for a taunt, which I thought they might do. So that's why I just went for Thunderbolt, and that should solidif solidify our win, even if this doesn't take it out. And it does though, so that's fine. So we take a 1-0 win because I made a pretty bad switch in, but um, either way, we were able to get the win, so that's not bad at all. GG's to our opponent. But yeah, switching with Coco definitely was a little unwise. Um, Coco would have been able to put a lot more easier pressure, and I wouldn't have to be worried about speed ties with Cartana. We were able to win those speed ties, thankfully, but um, uh, yeah, that would have been a little, a lot more scary if we would have lost, uh, especially that second speed speed tie with uh, Cartana. Maybe it wasn't a speed tie. Maybe that wasn't a Salt Vest Cartana, which uh, it likely was. I do have a, a solid hunch that it was, but uh, at the same time, you can never just make that assumption. I didn't go for any special attacks on it. Yeah, I didn't go for any special attacks. I just went for Lunge and uh, Sacred Sword, so maybe it was. Um, I wouldn't know without doing some extensive calcs. We are just going to get another battle and hopefully it's another quality one as we get a 1564 opponent from Italy, which is really cool. And they are going to have a team of Nihiligo, Snorlax, Gyarados, Tapu, Tapu Lele, freaking, oh, why can't I think, Lilligant and Torkoal. Um, that is, that's an interesting team and that's an interesting name and square. Uh, Definitely like Coco. I really like leading Coco when I see the whole Lilligan thing, just like in the lead lead uh, with a Pokemon that doesn't uh, that prevents us from being put to sleep. Kind of puts a, a lot more pressure on Lilligan, but then Lilligan can just go for the after you. So it is something to consider, which makes me want to bring Salamence so that I could switch in something that doesn't mind or that resist at least resist the um, the very powerful eruption that. Well, yeah, I want Salamence in the back, actually, so... What do I want to lead with Salamence? Well, I mean lead with Coco. What do I want to lead with Coco? Um... Depending on what my opponent brought, Nihiligo can definitely be an issue, but I kind of went hard on trying to counter the Lilligant lead. Uh, I, I'm really not the biggest fan of playing against this uh, this little Torkoal Lilligant archetype. 
especially when it's supported correctly. It can be a really strong team, but hopefully uh, we brought the correct Pokemon to have a solid chance of winning this one. So we are challenged by Pokemon Trainer Square. We do go with our Tapu Koko Raquanid lead as we anticipate their, them going for their little Gantorko lead. So we did get the lead right, which is nice. Um, they likely will just go for an After You and Eruption. That is what I envision them going for. So that is going to prompt me to just protect our Koko and to just go for damage on their uh, Torkoal. We do also, yeah, this would allow me to also scout and see if um, if uh, our opponent likely has some way of getting around wide guard. I'm not sure they'll predict what if they will predict wide guard or exactly how they'll go about go about playing around that. Opponent does just protect their tor Torkoal, so we'll see exactly what they went for. Probably just went for a little bit of damage. Do just go for a Bloom Doom, which is likely targeted on the Raclanid. Uh, not bad. Good play by my opponent. Um, I didn't really want to make that prediction. Uh, there was a solid chance that uh, they might just do that, but did not want to make that prediction. We should live a Bloom Doom, but I can't say without a fact that Araquanid will live a Bloom Doom, so we might be in a little bit of... Oh, it's targeted on Tapu Koko, which is, which is fine. That is fine. And we do Liquidation into the Protect. Alright, so what we'll do instead is we'll just go for a Discharge and a Wide Guard. I am hoping that our uh, my opponent is going to go for that Eruption and think we're not carrying Wide Guard. That'd be really nice. Uh, Torkoal does just switch out though, so unfortunately uh, we are just protecting ourselves from the uh, from the Discharge. Uh, either way though, this should be solid damage on both of these Pokemon and we may even get a pair as we do have that 1 in 3 chance with Discharge. A Leaf Storm going into our Coco slot. Can we live that? We cannot live that, but that does very severely uh, weaken the Lilligant. Um, that's unfortunate, though. Uh, good play by my opponent. So Intimidate, yeah. I go into Salamence. It's definitely the better option, even with the uh, Lilligant at minus one. I'd rather uh, just uh, get the Intimidate off on Snorlax and uh, just go for maximum damage on Snorlax. I'm actually going to flamethrower the Lilligant slot. Even if it's a switch into Torkoal, um, I feel like we can get some solid damage off. And then I'm going to lunge the Snorlax slot to bring its attack stat down even further than what it's already at, at with minus one. So um, hopefully that's a decent play. Lilligant does switch out. Um, didn't want to make any prediction. It is into Torkoal, so I could have Draconium z that slot, but um, didn't want to try too hard to make predictions. Decent damage. We do get the lunge off on Snorlax. It's now minus two. Snorlax does go for a curse. Alright, and that's another reason I didn't want to go for Draconium Z because I wanted to be able to get, in case this was cursed Snorlax, I wanted to be able to get a damage off, a very strong special uh, damage off on Snorlax without having to, um, without, without sacrificing our Draconium Z. Do I double up on Snorlax and just let Torkoal sit there? Yeah, I honestly like that play. Snorlax is more of the threat right now, so focus up on Snorlax. Uh, it doesn't look like Torkoal protected, though, so that's kind of an issue. We'll go for that Draconium Z on Snorlax, and just in case this doesn't take it out, especially because it likely has a Figgy Berry, hopefully we can um, then uh, at least get close to taking it out with the Liquidation. So we do get the Draconium Z off. It does not take out Snorlax. That likely is going to, yes, and it's Figgy Berry isn't uh, put into effect. We do also go for the Liquidation. It is in the sun, though, so it shouldn't do that much damage. It does it still do, oh, it's a crit. Yeah, that was still very solid damage. Opponent does go for an Overheat, likely on Raconit. No, on Salamence. And that is actually going to be uh, very solid damage for my opponent. And then we have a Facade going off into a Raconit. It is minus two, so we take that pretty nicely. So now I think I'll just go for a Draco Meter. Um, not 100% sure this will take out Snorlax. Has a very high special defense stat, um, but I at least want to give it a try. 
So I'll just go for a Draco Meteor, and then we will go for the Liquidation on Torkoal. Um, Araquanid should, even if it's targeted, be able to stick around due to its Citrus Berry that we're holding. And uh, um, Torkoal is at minus two right now because of the because of the overheat. As Snorlax does just protect, which is perfectly fine. We likely have uh, some damage coming off from Torkoal into our Araquanid, but I mean into our Salamence to maybe take it out. And we do have a heat wave. Uh, Salmon should actually be able to live a minus two heat wave. Yeah, we both Pokemon take that very well. And now that uh, the um, the sunlight disappears from the field, so now I can just Draco Torkoal and I can liquidate Snorlax because now we don't have that uh, sun that is uh, decreasing the damage output of our water type stab on a Raquanid. So we should be able to uh, um, knock out a. Snow Axe here as long as it doesn't switch out and uh, also knock out Torkoal if it doesn't switch out. Likely will switch out into that little Gant, but that's fine. But Snor Snow Axe already protected, so unless my opponent wants to switch into something else or maybe switch in Willow Gant on that slot, uh, we should be able to take out Snorlax. So we haven't played around uh, the team the best, but um, I do think we are bringing it slowly, but surely bringing this game back. Looks like Lilligan's going to switch in on that slot. Yes, it is going to switch in on that slot. Likely to bring it down to its Sash. We do hit the Draco Meteor. I'm not sure I've missed the Draco Meteor but, uh, this season. Maybe missed one so far this season. Um, doesn't bring it down to its Sash, but pretty practically a Sash. And then we do go for that Liquidation. So we are able to take out Snorlax, but now we are in a predicament as to uh, we have to kind of make a prediction on who Lilligant will use Sleep Powder on. Because now it's going to be faster than both of us and we no longer have Electric Terrain to prevent us from putting being put to sleep. So we kind of have to make a prediction here as to uh, which Pokemon is going to get a t targeted by, um, targeted by uh, Lilligant's Liquidation. I'm actually going to double protect to not only stall out a turn of sun, but to also just see, um, kind of get an idea of who my opponent wants to go for that sleep powder on. So I'm going to go for that uh, just to make sure they're also going to go for sleep powder. Maybe not the best play because now my opponent knows they can, whichever one they wanted to sleep powder, they can. Uh, okay, so we have a hidden power coming off instead. Hidden power and overheat. So in attempt to save our Salamence, I'm actually going to switch it out into Mudsdale, hoping that my opponent still goes for that play, and uh, I just I'm hoping that they definitely just don't go for sleep powder on either slot. And then uh, hopefully we can uh, knock out Lilligan. And even if Overheat takes us out, we should be in a better position. My opponent does switch it up and go for a Leaf Storm on our Araquanid slot. That ever so slightly misses out on the Oko on our Araquanid. Or not the Oko, just the KO. <laughs> we are going to be able to get the lunge off though. And we'll see if uh, Torkoal decided to still go for Overheat. Or if it maybe decided to switch up its move. It does still just go for overheat, likely on the Mudsdale slot. We will. Ooh. Oh, that is a crit. Alright, I was wondering why our health just. Deaths and just ran out. Um, this is going to come down 100% to what my uh, opponent's final Pokemon is. What do they have in the back? So that's unfortunate that we had to get crit on Mudsdale. I was definitely hoping to have Mudsdale to take on this. Uh, yeah, to take on both of these two Pokemon. Yeah, Nihiligo is likely going to win my opponent the game. So maybe I should have just uh, stayed in and allowed us uh, Salamence to be taken out. Because, uh, yeah, it looks like Nihiligo will actually win the game for my opponent. Um... This is the best that I can try to do. Um... I can try to protect Salamence, hoping that my opponent will target that slot, and then just uh, go for a liquidation on Nihiligo. Not sure he'll even take it out because of the sun, though. So, uh, yeah, I think we actually lose this one due to uh, losing Mudsdale to that crit. I likely should have just let Salamence go down. I forgot that uh, they had a Nihiligo on their team and how much uh, Nihiligo pressures uh, these two. 
uh, these two especially. So, yeah, and the Power Gym does go off into a Raconid, so that will be game. So GG's to my opponent. Yeah, just a just a pretty bad mistake on my part. Um, I, I completely um, overlooked the fact that my opponent did have that knee heal ago, so um, I should have I should have just let Salmons go down. I should have uh, focused on uh, getting Mudsdale in here and taking on this Torkoal as easy as possible. But uh, crits do happen though, so that's another reason why I shouldn't have switched it in. GG's to my opponent though. Hello goes a very scary Pokemon. It threatens a lot of Pokemon on our team, but especially Araquanid, Salamence, and Tapu Koko. So I should have. Uh, that was the reason. Part of the reason, obviously, for the uh, for the Torkoal matchup outside of Sun when it uh, when it wasn't able to uh, when it's not able to Solar Beam us was a uh, um, a large reason I wanted Mudsdale in that one, but also for that uh, Nihiligo so that it improved our matchup versus Nihiligo because uh, uh, Nihiligo just puts so much pressure on a lot of Pokemon. Thank you all, though, so much for tuning in to today's episode of VGC Climbing the Ladder. If you did end up enjoying these battles we had for you all, definitely leave a like. It really helps supporting the channel and subscribe for more VGC content. I'm going to get the heck out of here, guys. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you in the next episode. For now, though, peace out. Have a good one.